Mr. Will, Cisco yeah. launches HyperShield to address AI security. Talk to us about HyperShield. And HyperShield, so this is something that Cisco announced this week and it's aimed at bringing the scale of, of sort of AI capabilities and data center to data centers and clouds um, from, from sort of a hyper, uh, hyperscaler perspective. And Cisco talks about it being built on three key pillars. It's AI native, no surprise there. It is cloud native and it's hyper distributed. And so, you know, from my perspective, the company didn't wait long after the close with Splunk and I'll be weighing in on that in a future Forbes contribution more than likely. But what I really like about um, Hyperchill, number one, I love the name. I'm a Star Wars nerd. It reminds <laughs> me of hyperspace and Han Solo and Chewbacca. So um, I love that about it. But from my perspective, um, AI workloads are going to be moving to the network edge and into the client with the rise of AI PC and that sort of thing. And just the need to do things more cost effectively from an AI workload perspective. So when I sort of look at this at the surface, um, Cisco aims to sort of uh, address that, protecting apps, uh, data, and devices. So um, I will be weighing in on this topic as well um, with, a, with a contribution, but it's sort of, you know, from my perspective, it's sort of a kind of a security fabric, you know, to sort of protect, you know, the, the models and the data and the apps. So Matt, Matt, what do you think? I mean, you know, from your perspective, is it, a, is it compelling? I think it's uh, absolutely compelling. I'm kind of curious about <clears throat> with with HyperShield and talking about things moving out to the edge. If this is more than just AI, if this is kind of you know, um, kind of on the edge um, security in general, right? A, a security yeah. fabric for in general. I'm also curious about whether this, how this plays in with the larger Cisco um, security IP portfolio. Um, and whether this is eventually folds into, you know, they've got a lot of a lot of um, uh, uh, products and services that they deliver, right? Does this yeah. eventually fold into one big, um, and does this become the fabric for one big security offering that they have? Uh, well, you know, they're they're trying to sort of um, consolidate what they're doing from a security standpoint with uh, Cisco Security Cloud, and to yeah. your point, certainly they have a lot of different solutions. They don't, they don't intend to be all things to all people. I've spent a lot of time with Tom Gillis that, that runs their security business unit. But I do think eventually this could you know, sort of fold in um, to that activity because at the end of the day, it's, it's the difficulty that enterprises are facing in managing you know, these various disparate tools. Yeah. And, and so I think this you know, kind of brings you know, kind of the whole AI security you know, and simplifies it from, from my perspective. Time will tell, but you know, to your point, I think they would be wise to keep things simple for customers. Yeah, and I think here's here's you know, we all know that AI. Everybody talks about uh, training, 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 and large language models, and that's that's captured the attention of pundits, press, enterprise folks. Everybody's talking about that, right? Sure. But the but the long the long tail on all of this and the long term play is inference, and it's inference, and it's using that data. And that data does not necessarily reside in a core data center, right? right. Um, it's going to reside uh, in you know stores that are you know trying to set up smart registers. It's going to reside on oil platforms. It's residing everywhere. And the mm -hmm. question is, how do you protect that when it's quote unquote out in the wild? Which yeah. Paul probably has a, a much better perspective on than I do. But that's the big challenge, and I think that's where this really is going to have a lot of value to enterprise organizations. Obviously, yeah, I agree. And one thing I'm uh, I was always curious about is when you get uh, you keep getting better and better and better security, and you get more and more aggressive because you want to cut cut the time frames down to you want to respond to uh, what you think might be a threat or a problem immediately. And when they start doing that, um, then it seems like they're getting close to to uh, having a, a a false alarm become a a, a a false positive. Uh -huh. I don't know how they manage that. Uh, something I'd like to find more, find out more about. But uh, you know, it seems like that could happen. It could uh, really impact uh, operational efficiency and and risk and everything. If you get, you know, start getting a lot of false positives. So. False positives. That's a story of my life. False positives. <laughs> uh, anyway, <laughs> let's. Uh... 
Sometimes false positives probably can be good, you know? 